I've, I've made every classic mistake. I've FOMO'd into things, bought the top, sold the bottom. I've went all in on a, you know, stock tip in 2012 and literally watched it go to zero. Like, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. I had no business spending on a pharmaceutical stock that literally, like I bought at $6 a share and I sold at one penny a share when it got delisted. You know, I mean, I've really, I've, I've been abused by the market, you know. And I think you just get to a certain point where losing sucks so much that you improve, you know. And it's like you, you can't trust a, a skinny chef, you know. You can't trust a trader who hasn't gone broke at least once or twice and blown up their account, you know. But the thing, transitioning compounds those errors and emotional decisions and bad decisions with becoming a quote-unquote full-time trader because what is a full-time trader really? Like I can't trade full-time. I can trade 20 minutes a day and that's enough, right? I see what I want to see on the chart. I take my position and if I'm smart, I walk away. So the problem is when you become a full-time trader and commit to it is you feel like you need to be in the market all the time and you feel like you always need to be trading because like, what am I doing if I'm not like working my ass off? But the reality is once you get to a certain point, there's not that much work to do. You know, you see what you want to see, you know your plan. You're able to, you have a strategy in place and you execute it and you're actually going to just screw yourself if you sit around and watch it, right? Like you're going to make an emotional decision, take profit too early, move your stop loss down, you know, panic, do all these things because you're not following your plan. So I think once you get to a certain point where you know what your plan is, you see what you want to see on a chart, there's very little to do as a quote pro trader. So I would say I pushed way too hard at the beginning traded way too much, didn't really understand the tax implications of doing so in the United States, which is like just a utter and disastrous train wreck. Um, and so I would say, you know, I've made, I mean, I'm like a walking textbook of things you shouldn't do trading over the past 20 something years, you know, and I think that anyone who's been doing it for long enough probably has all of those stories and bad experiences under their belt. But now, you know, the last few years have been, they've made up for it on many, many multiples, anything I've lost. So it's, it's been great. That's great. You know, and I'm a huge fan of the UFC and I love boxing as well. And usually the champions are the ones who've lost, you know, and then come back and actually won after and learning from their losses and discovering themselves. So I think, and, and by the way, there's so many interesting kind of golden rules that you mentioned in that specific answer. And just to go over a few, in terms of don'ts, you mentioned don't FUD or don't FOMO don't be emotional. Are those some of the biggest don'ts when it comes to trading mistakes for beginners? Yeah. I mean, I, so like I started a newsletter last year and it was just because like uh, I felt Twitter was too short form and I just had more ideas and wanted to write them out longer. And I find myself almost when I write the intro to almost every single one, just talking about trading psychology and emotions, because in my experience, that's the whole ball game. And even when you talk about technical analysis and strategies and all these things, all you're looking at on a chart is a visualization of people's emotions, when they're feeling fearful, when they're feeling greedy, and how you should trade based on that. I mean, that's really, I think, what you're looking at. So as you said, I think that is literally the whole ballgame. 